What the fuck? I just found Harry Potter as a manga in Chinese. So does anybody know what I'm actually watching here? So 10 cores on the smartphone. Sounds like a joke, but it has become reality with the Le Echo, Li Echo, whatever, Le2 X620. So don't get confused, um, it has many names, but it's always the same, there's just one standard version and one pro version, and I've got here the standard version which retails for only around 200 euro or dollars, depends where you buy from, and you can find a link to my favorite shop down below in the description. So well, what's so special about the smartphone? So it comes with an Helio X20, it's a tanker processor, and if I would be on a budget of around 200, I would definitely buy this phone right now because you pay so little and you get so much. So the specs in there are really really good. I just don't agree with the color so the rose gold edition. Seriously guys after the iPhone I was so pissed all the manufacturers came up with rose gold smartphones and I think it looks pretty shitty. Alright so what do you get for the price? For 200 you get a full HD resolution display which looks very good by the way. So it has nice colors, it's probably not the brightest one on the market, but sharpness good, colors good, and I really like it. It has a 3000 mAh battery with quick charging. You can see our charger test here and it charged pretty fast. So um, basically the power adapter, it was just actually picking 25 watts from the power socket, which is crazy. So quick charging works very good, but it's a huge charger, it's heavy and I had to use an adapter for it. So well, that's regarding charging. Now it has the Helio X20, it's a tanker processor, and you need to think about it. It's a three cluster CPU, two quad cores, one dual core. Absolutely ridiculous. So this tanker processor um, comes pretty close to the Huawei P9 also. Um, not, it's for sure a performance difference, but for the price of $200, it's just awesome what you get. So you get really good performance. 3 gigabytes of RAM, there's also the Pro version with 4 gigabytes, and MediaTek is still stuck with DDR3, while other um, companies, so Qualcomm for instance, still already uses DDR4 and the devices, which is a performance boost, but here um, DDR3 and also an older generation of LTE, but still very nice for the price. Alright, we have 30 gigabytes of ROM in the base version, which can't be extended. You have a micro SD card slot, sorry, nano SD card slot, of what I'm talking about, nano SIM card slot, dual, because it's a dual SIM smartphone. And yeah, um, that's pretty good, but it has no LTE band B20, so for Germany you probably won't have LTE. In my country, well, also not working, and that's the only downside so far, but still very, very good. So, yeah, that's a smartphone. Let's have a closer look here at all the things and I will try to cover them as good as possible. First of all, it has some kind of, yeah, black bars around the display and I don't like this so much. So, with a black wallpaper, it looked like the phone would be bezel-less and they also have that on the advertising pictures to make it look more slim, more bezel-less. The display itself, as I've told you, vivid colors, um, bright, not too bright and, um, yeah, sharpness also very good. We have capacitive touch buttons here at the bottom. This is something I like. I hate softer buttons. And we have here a menu button, we have the home button, we have a back button. The capacitive backlight is so weak that you can't see it outside. So only at night then you can see a glimpse of your capacitive touch buttons, but that's it. At the top we have the front facing camera which is 8 megapixels, but the camera application is a bit buggy and it needs some soft optimization to be honest. In the middle we have the speaker which sounds quite okay and here we have the, yeah, the sensors, light and proximity and left from that we have um, the notification LED which is hidden. But well, the sensors look like the front facing cameras are always looking to the wrong thing because it looks like a lens, pretty crazy. Alright, so the feeling in my hands, really good. So it has a metal unibody, aluminum and feels very good but as soon as you check out the smartphone you see something is missing, the 3.5mm headphone jack. So it has a USB Type-C at the bottom and it's a revision 1, that means you can also output audio over USB Type-C, so it's real USB Type-C and there's a connection adapter included, which I will just show you in a second. We have here something which looks like a dual speaker layout, but nope, single speaker as always. The SIM card tray, it's here on the left side, two nano SIM cards as I've told you, and at the top we have an IR blaster, which is a really cool thing, so you can use it also as a remote control. If you check out the back side, you will see the camera, which has, um, if I'm right, yeah, 60 megapixels, and it comes a little bit out of the device. The Pro version has 21 megapixels, so this is the improvement. 
We have here a dual tone LED flash, which is kind of okay, and we have a fingerprint scanner, which is pretty fast and not the fastest one I've seen, but it's quite accurate and gets the job done. LED TV, LED Echo, sorry, a Lico logo here at the bottom, and yeah, smartphone feels pretty good in my hands and has a nice solid aluminum body and very good vibration feedback. So that's the smartphone now from the outside. I quickly want to show you what you can find inside the package. So this guys is the charger and this is a real brick. It's super heavy, it's massive and the output it's 12 volts, 2 amps, so 25 watts and we were able to measure that so this is absolutely good quick charging. So good job Ali Echo on the charging. It comes also with a USB Type-C cable, yeah, around 70 centimeters long. Um, user manual, kind of useless, and we have a USB Type-C adapter to a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So what's the problem with that? So if you lose it, you're basically fucked. You have to order another one. You have one less connector on your smartphone. I mean, there's enough space for that, so it's not really a space problem. And um, there are many tweaks and it sounds also pretty good over USB Type-C, but the problem is still if I want to switch my headphones, if I forget this at home, I'm pretty much fucked and I can't connect any headphones I borrow from my friends. So this sucks kinda right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're now here on the smartphone and it's super snappy, really fast. That's a real pleasure to use. It runs Android 6 Marshmallow, but on the top we have EUI. And first of all, I found Xiaomi devices with MIUI shit, but then I came to EUI. This is basically the worst experience ever. You can see here the Android version. So this is Android 6 Marshmallow, definitely. And that's pretty good, but... Um, What's running here on the top, if you press here the button which looks like a menu button, it opens up here some live TV application and this sometimes randomly pops up and asks you to play back something or whatever. So LE TV or Li Echo the rebrand, it was actually a TV or actually is a TV company so they want to promote their own stuff with their devices here and you see all those shitty um, movies or whatever and I just watched, I don't know, Chinese Harry Potter, <laughs> it, it, it was really strange and I did actually watch an hour some strange movies. Okay, so here if you press the menu button, this is also kind of strange, you get here to the normal, what I would say, control, mini control panel where you can basically have all the quick toggles. So Wi-Fi, data, auto rotation, blah, blah, blah. Also the LED flash here, you can see it by the way. Um, it's kind of strong, hurts in my eyes, and it's dual tone, gets you a nice skin tone. So here you can just like on the iPhone for instance swipe up to close applications and you can see here 1.3 gigabytes of 3 gigabytes RAM are available. If you swipe down from the top you just get your notifications and you can go here to management. So it's a little bit different than on stock Android. And it also comes with a shitload of bloat. So we also have here some office application, Lee Me, Lee Mail, Lee Store. And um, the Google Play Store was not pre-installed. It's actually very easy. You just install the APK or you can maybe download it from the Lee store but I'm not really sure if anyone here speaks Chinese please translate that to me I would be really glad because um, there's always some error or something like that so I can't use the store properly so ladies and gentlemen that's basically it Let's go here to the settings and there we can see Wi-Fi. I have to say the Wi-Fi connection is simply awesome. I have no problems with Wi-Fi at all and it's even better than my iPhone but that's not a big deal. So Bluetooth here you can see, um, yeah, on the more we have the usual stuff, personal hotspot, blah, blah. Display has um, some nice cool things like different color modes for different colors. We have here scale view and um, yeah, some things are still in Chinese. This is something I don't like too much. Um, LETV or Lieco wants to be a global player and if you sell devices to Europe you should get rid of all Chinese stuff if you switch it to English because this is a, a multi-language ROM but multi-language only between English and Chinese so yeah that's it we have notification management blah 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 so as we know from Android dual app WeChat so you see a lot of Chinese integration there's also Li Cloud so just like what Xiaomi does they also implement their own services System update. So this is EUI 5.6 and I have to say already has a system update, 1.8 gigabytes and yeah, they're working on, on bug fixes and that's pretty good. So thanks LETV or Lieco. Um, here we have the application management. So here you can see what is installed. We have the battery and as I've told you, four to five hours of on-screen time is possible. Time since last charge, eight hours. And here you can see um, what drained the most, like here the screen and also the camera because I was recording 4K. Regarding the storage, as I've told you, um, 32 gigabytes, um, yeah, 
by default, so I have now used 10 gigabytes because of all the games and still 18 gigabytes available with not using um, too many things. So 32 gigabyte is okay, but also gets full quite fast if you have a lot of stuff. So 64 would be um, yeah, way better, but 32 is not really a deal breaker for me. So that's it. Here, last but not least, about the phone, what you've seen before, and that's all the settings and all the features. So a quick overview. Now here you can see the UI, so we don't have an app drawer anymore. I've shown you quickly how to use it. You can also get rid of some things there if you want to. Um, yeah, here you can see also some Chinese stuff. So yeah, you definitely need some customization or wait for the custom ROMs, which will make this device really, really awesome. All right, so you can see here several applications. Um, also something I want to mention is the remote control. If you go here back to the menu and I think it was here at the top, then you can get to the remote control and with the IR blaster, you can control your TV, air condition or whatever. So let's jump directly into the camera application and here you can see it. So you will now during the review just see some camera samples so just check it out on the screen. I can also show you some here on the smartphone. So I had really a lot of fun with this device and the camera is really good for the price. If you have plenty of light, sharp shots, super nice details. Well, low light, um, it's not so super nice, but video mode is also good because this chipset finally supports 4K recording. Um, I can quickly show you here the settings in photo mode. So there we go. Um, yeah, here you can see them. So we have um, the usual stuff like white balance, ISO. You can play around with the exposure settings and it has um, that phase autofocus and it's really, really fast. Can even focus here on the black um, background as you can see, which is usually really um, hard for phones. Also here, the mirroring glass surface. And here we have videos. So you can see here that we have actually 4K. And also, if you go to slow motion, we have up to four times, so like one second is in four seconds in slow motion, but I guess it's 720p and you will see a sample anyway. So yeah, that's the camera. We can switch here to the front camera. So hello guys, and that's Marek, that's me. And yeah, it's pretty cool because the setup is, uh, sorry, the camera is wide angle and I can get myself easily on the picture. So hold it right now, like 50 centimeters away from the body, cameras on there and also some other stuff. So that's pretty good. We have loads of effects in the normal application. We also have face beauty mode, which should actually make you more beautiful and the usual other crap. So yeah, um, sample pictures are also right there on the screen and you can find some down below in the description. So make sure you check them out. All in all, I have to say front facing camera gets the job done. Rear camera, pretty good if you have plenty of light, but um, in low light conditions can get really noisy easily and video mode is, yeah, not too bad at all, but on the front facing camera sucks. All right, so let's have a look at the benchmark. So yeah, um, first of all, I want to talk about GPS. I had no problem with GPS. We can try it quickly here indoors, also outdoors. You see, um, we're here in the office, but it still will find a fix, as you can see, 3D fix, and also we use it outside, so really no problems, very good GPS connection. Regarding the benchmarks, so we have here Geekbench 3. Let me quickly run it. Right, right, the benchmarks are finished. Almost 1,700 single core score, and now the impressive thing, almost 5,000 multi core score for $200. So this is pretty, pretty good. All right, if we check out here um, CPUC, and we go here to SOC, you can see it clocks from 338 up to 2.3 gigahertz on 10 cores. Yeah, pretty crazy, but most of the cores are stopped here right now for um, just being here in the menu. Android 6, no root access by default, so um, if you want to deep load and all that, you need root, and there are custom ROMs soon, so stay tuned for that. We can quickly go here to sensor box. It comes with a gyroscope, which is also working, and a magnetic sensor, so you can use this also for VR um, applications, and that's pretty good. All right, so in the Antutu benchmark, which is probably more common, um, you can see 90K, and if we check out here the ranking, then um, it comes, yeah, kind of close to the P9. So 1,000 points difference, and guess what? The P9 is super expensive. So yeah, um, for $200, you definitely get a lot of performance, but it's not really so good optimized. So in the games like Asphalt 8, Modern Combat 5, FPS drops are incoming, and yeah, definitely need some improvements. It's a multi-touch display, as you can see right over here. So five point capacitive touch screen. No, actually it's 10 points. So I would have to use both of my hands. This is pretty, pretty crazy. And yeah, um, very good. No problems with um, speed tests. So I also used um, of, um, yeah, Wi-Fi and all that, but 4G is not working in my country because LT Band B20 is missing. It was a bit of pain to install the Play Store, but once you get it, it's actually working fine. So well, 
And that's it guys, gaming performance also okay, benchmarks are real killer for 200 but it needs some optimization so that's actually the message behind that. A lot of raw power but let's wait for the custom ROMs to really get most out of this device here. Guys last but not least here's a quick speaker test on YouTube so you can see the USB Type-C adapter is um, connected but um, as long as you don't plug in headphones it will actually still play back over the speakers. So it's not dual speaker only the right speaker here so the right speaker grid has a speaker inside which is working and there we go play button and at maximum volume here right now it really oversteers a little bit trying with different mp3 files also on my smartphone but actually they're copyright protected so we're using youtube and as you can see a bit too much bass here sometimes and not so clear now the speaker is okay it gets the job done but it's not really some hand speak all right all right so let's come to my final conclusion about the lieco le2 First of all, I thought only those Xiaomi devices have the best price performance ratio and they're really worth it. But now, Lieco came up with the LE2 and this one here is killing a lot of Xiaomi devices. And I have to say, um, if there are custom ROMs in the future, which will bring a smoother OS, less of this China crap, sorry, I don't want to sound racist, but for us in Europe here, this is really useless. Um, if that gets improved, if it gets a little bit smoother, if it would come with LT band B20, so there's a different version studying in India, not really sure about the frequencies, but anyway, this smartphone is a real killer and I would say I would definitely buy it right now. Okay, so that's it. The operating system is something I don't really like so much. Um, it has no LT Band B20 and you're stuck with the memory. Only downside is, yeah, um, this USB Type-C adapter is also pretty crappy. I would prefer a headphone jack, but honestly, except of that, the smartphone is just great. And for the price, a real killer. So check it out. Link is down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Leave me a comment down below. What's your favorite smartphone right now? And also, what do you want to see next? So... Thanks for watching, leave a like down below, please, please, please support us, and a comment is always super helpful, so see you very soon in the next one, have a nice day and bye bye.